Uh, I don't think I can remember the last time I was in, even in San Francisco. So to come up here and to actually uh, talk to some fans of animation and those particular arts that have to do with fantasy and films and everything, it's a, it's a thrill. Because it's not like just meeting everyday people. It's like meeting very special people. And I'm really appreciative that you invited us to come, Gary, John, and myself. They're in the restroom right now, so I don't know. Right? <laughs> um, so they'll be here shortly, and then they can join me, and we can get into some kind of a discussion about things that you would like to know about. Um, I've spent a great deal of my life, in fact, all of it, in, in supporting the art of animation and, and seeing it change over the years, as it was once traditional, which I still really love, and uh, now it has turned into something which is CGI, and it's also very fun to watch that, and who knows where it's going to go from there. But we definitely have visions all around us of what the world could be and how to entertain through stories. And I just want to throw an idea out to you that might be thinking about, what is the purpose of telling a story to anyone at all? Why tell stories? Ah, yes. Yes, and how long has storytelling been going on? Stories, and stories do something for us. They allow us to be inspired, you know, to see something that maybe we can't see on our own. Very much like a smorgasbord if you go to eat and you know, it's all laid out there on the table for you and you can choose and pick the things that appeal to you. So story is really, really important. Notice that um, I, I, when I read the Bible, which I do occasionally, and I listen to all the parables that Christ taught, I thought, is he ever once in the Bible, hunt for this, ever once in the Bible that he just answered a question? He didn't. He told stories. And, and when you tell stories, people then, then look at them and hear them, and they come to their own conclusions. So it's, uh, it's really a great medium to, to tell a story to someone. Remember that when you're in conversation. Tell stories. I think it'll work. Anyway, uh, Gary Goldman and John Pomeroy. <laughs> you band is Joe. Hey, how's it going? It's good, it's good. good. I used to be in the Air Force. It's a good place. Yeah, all right. Yeah, McClellan's been here for as long as I can remember. Heck, it's no longer a functioning Air Force base, though. But... Interesting. Yeah, no, it's... So, uh, as you all can see now, we have uh, Gary Goldman and, and John Pomeroy joining us up on stage with Don Blue. So, well, I guess, uh, do you guys want to introduce yourselves and see what you've been up to lately? And, and then... Uh... I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the, for the folks that want to ask questions, we have a mic right up in front here. So if you, uh, once we get going, if you want to form a nice orderly line and we can start asking questions and we've got plenty of time to do it so this is kind of a rarity a rarity for you yeah or? we the three we have not gotten together in what about nine ten years i yeah. think it's wow. been a while so that's well, because you guys were for, so together for so long it was a reunion on oh. the airplane on the airplane yeah. oh okay was it just because you were together for so long, you were at a point where like, I don't want to talk to you anymore? And then just... Well, and we live in different places, too. <laughs> oh, in the I States. talked to him on the phone. Just we haven't seen his face in a while. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Don uh, didn't recognize him, by the way. <laughs> it was the mustache. <laughs> it's like, it, was the, it was the change in hair color. Okay. It, it makes it difficult nowadays because we have email. And so what you do is you email and you send pictures of people and everything. But it's never quite the same as actually pressing the flesh. You know, and talking to someone, that is, uh, that's an amazing experience. Each of us got busy with the things that we all do. I now own a theater in which I'm doing um, legitimate shows. Legitimate. Uh, be careful. That legitimate <laughs> means that it's live shows. And so there's actors. And so I found that dealing and directing actors is very much like the same problems you deal with in animation. You're dealing with the blocking of things, you're dealing with how people move, you're dealing with uh, motives, what's going on when they're thinking, what do the actors think when they're actually uh, saying their lines. And oddly enough, what I've discovered is the lines of a play are the least communicative. What's subtext, what's underneath the lines or between the lines is what's more important. So when you're animating a character, it's what the character is doing with his business that often sends a message much stronger than what the character is saying. 
but almost everyone thinks that what comes out of their mouth is number one, and it's really not. The, the real communication happens with the body, and so uh, the theater has taught me that, and I think storyboarding's taught me that, because when you storyboard, you definitely have to decide what your characters are thinking and what their characters are to the other characters in the storyboard. So all of that is about motive, and it's not about drawings. Drawings is the language. That's the language. Now, I, I went to a foreign country one time, I couldn't speak a word of Spanish and can't roll my R's. So I went to this country and I knew that I had something to say when I was there, but I didn't know the language. So once I learned the language, I could communicate the thought. Same way with drawing. Once you learn the language of drawing, which takes a lot of practice, you can't be lazy. Once you learn the language, then what you say with your drawings becomes so fun and so, uh, so fun to do. That's all I've said. <laughs> we have been busy, haven't we? I think so. Well, yeah. What, what have you been up to, John? Uh, let's see, I'm scattered all over the animation map, so I am currently working with Disney TV under um, Jamie Mitchell, who's director of Sophia the First. So I've been on that for the last two and a half years. Been also working with Spike Brandt, who's the director of the Tom and Jerry series for Warner Brothers Animation, been working on that. Working with an old ex-colleague of ours from Disney days, Rick Rich, he is now into Swan Princess 7 for Sony, been working on that. And I love painting. I've been doing a lot of um, portrait painting, but mostly military illustration. I've got some of my prints on my, at our, my table. Uh, and I, I've just been um, working with Disney Hyperion Books on a children's book called Big Words Books. They do a large format. They've done John Lennon, um, uh, Martin Luther King, John F. Kennedy, uh, Abraham Lincoln, and now they're doing Walt Disney and his bio autobiogra biographical work, and I'm illustrating it, so I, I feel kind of honored to do that. Um, and then just working uh, with various story sketch ideas that come to me, you know, and it's been great. I love to draw, and every morning I get to do it. There you go. And actually, I love to draw. <laughs> Very good. But that's kind of the key, you know, the the we were talking the other day of that moment where the bug bites you and it was all somewhere between the ages of four six and eleven for us each one of us came to have a love affair with drawing and then animation with myself it started by way of puppets here you came by a different way. i did clay and and uh, antique models tiny ones and, and drew all through school and, and learned a lot of bad habits until i got into art school you? Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, mine's a story that's really strange because I think when I saw the movie Snow White I was four years old and it intrigued me a lot. I mean, I think the colors of it, which isn't in CG by the way, the colors of it, uh, the style of it, I mean the story itself and my favorite of course was that terrific old queen that went down and changed herself into a hag. That's scary, you know, and I was very impressed with it. So from then on I came home and tried to draw what I thought I saw. And it just went on and on and on and on and on. My parents despaired of ever being anything at all. Um, they kept saying, why don't you be a dentist, Don? Or a, a school teacher, that's safe. Why don't you be a, a fireman? Uh, no, I can't do that, for sure. And so all these things are suggested that are safe and wonderful, but the one thing your parents will not want you to do is go into the arts. Um, because they know that it's risky and it involves sacrifice involves trade-offs, all kinds of things, and then if you happen to meet the love of your life, good luck, <laughs> because <laughs> there goes the dream, uh, and, and it's really, really hard, and unless you find the right spouse who will support you and also loves the arts, then it's really a wonderful experience. Can I ask a question? <laughs> I'm going to step in as moderator. Oh, here you go. And, and this is always a question I would ask as an animation geek from way back when. What was, each one of us are going to say, what was your favorite scene to work on to anime? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you um, want to know? What was your favorite scene? Well, I think the only movie that we ever made that was innocent and from the, completely from the heart and uh, didn't involve, you know, the, the taint of commercial people all around you and everything, was Secret of Nim. And I think in Secret of Nim, we 
hadn't a clue what we were doing. Hadn't a clue. And I think through divine intervention or something that helped us, we, we were able to craft that picture in such a way that it has a, a heart in it or a message in it. Um, and I think the favorite scene was the one that I, the only one I animated was the, the fight scene between Jenner and, um, what was his name? Justin. Justin, yes. Jenner, it's terrible to get old, you think. <laughs> um, and Jenner and Justin, and that was really fun for me, because yeah. I enjoyed it. There you go. And what about you, Gary? Uh, a couple of moments. Uh, I, I had some scenes in, in uh, Rescuers that I really liked, and I think in Pete's Dragon, uh, when Don was directing, uh, the part in Peach Dragon where the boy was in the cave and he was uh, upset and the dragon followed him in there and blew a flame onto a stick and played tic-tac-toe. And I'm, I'm still very proud of that. And uh, uh, there was a moment after Nim and, and during the games that I slipped over into, I was, I became the producer and I was like, uh, I'd been in the arts, I'd done animation, and I could sympathize and empathize with all of the people working with us. So I took on that mantle and uh, it sort of pulled me away from being able to do both. So if some of you have come to me for a drawing and, and I've offered you one, Mrs. Brisby, which I can still draw. And uh, uh, But other than that, I mean, it's been an absolute joy being in this industry and staying alive. And for my part, they both have admitted what they're doing. What I'm doing and have been doing for the last 12 years is chasing real money so we can get our next feature film on board. So by the way, today they released on Facebook and other places uh, 2D traditional animation that we start starting our Kickstarter for Dragon's Lair the movie starting tomorrow. <laughs> Take a look, tell your friends, spread the word. Uh, you can actually forward this uh, pitch to um, to your friends. So please do and help us out. We'd be very grateful. I want to work on that. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. I, See, in the I, I, t I told John, uh, it's got to be three or four months here, or even longer, a year ago, he says, and if we pull this off, John, I'm coming after you. You're going to be a directing animator on this, just like we did in the past. I would love that. You See, in what? the animation world, this is like Led Zeppelin coming back together. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'd like to know? Since there's a crowd of people here, you know, who know the traditional animation and CG, if we were to do a Dragon's Lair movie, would you rather see it in CG or traditional? Traditional! Traditional, there you go. So how many, how many think okay. traditional? Just raise your hand. Okay, now put them down. How many say CG? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, just, just, just get out. No. <laughs> how about a combination of both? Okay. Okay, very good. Thank you. That's helpful. That's really helpful. Thanks. All right. Uh, hey, can I... Uh, you want to add? I that? guess, John. My, my favorite scene. <laughs> your favorite scene. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I feel, I feel bad. I left John. I, I, it's funny. Signing autographs today and coming in contact with the images of films that we've done over the last 30, 40 years and so on, I came in contact with a moment of, in my animation career, one scene that really touched me. It was a prophetic scene. Uh, I wasn't a father, so I had no experience of what it feels like to have your own baby son in front of you. That was to come later on. But one of my favorite scenes I remember was Littlefoot hatching out of the egg and seeing his parents for the first time. And uh, I don't know where it came from, but the vision came to me, and I put it on paper. And when you see that, and then later on, when you're in the theater, sitting in the dark, and you witness the reaction of the congregation of people that's watching that scene, and crying, or laughing, or feeling that emotion that you put on paper, it, it is so rewarding. Very addicting art form animation, and this is one of the reasons why. It was actually a choir of oh. Let me, uh, John does know where it came from. Uh, and, and when we're talking about the inspiration that comes to you, years ago I read a really interesting article about when Handel was writing The Messiah. He talked about something that he heard in his head called the blue note. How many have ever heard of that? Okay, the blue note is something that plays in your head 
when you're being inspired and when it happens you're compelled to write down or draw or paint or anything that you're going to do you're compelled to do it and we think that's called inspiration it can come from we call the muses if we don't want to offend each other if we want to just say it we can say god does something like that so through you as a conduit ideas are being born and I found out through my career that when the best ideas happen is when I act like a conduit instead of an actor. So what I do is I say, okay, um, the ideas are out there. And this strange thing happens. When you get an idea, you'll find that other people in different parts of the city will get the same idea. Have you had that experience? Suddenly you think you've got some unique idea and you find out that it's popping up all over. And it's really because it's kind of then fed into the ethos in some way yeah. that those who can pick it up can pick it up. If you're an artist and you're really sensitive about what you do, you need to, I think, be aware of this. It's a real strengthening element and it can help you in, in your artwork. So you're expressing something really quite divine, something that actually lifts the whole human race, brings them up. Uh, so you want very, very much to be kind of shy of your own personal opinion, but hunt for the ideas that the gods will feed to you, because they will. And you just have to be ready and sensitive enough to hear it. And when you hear it, your artwork's going to go just like that. It goes up, and it's amazing. And when it stops, you can feel that too. So look for the blue note, and I think you'll be a better artist. Admit, I've, I've actually had that happen. Yeah, I've had that happen. I, I do a lot of doodling. I don't do as much art as I used to, but it's definitely sitting there just kind of, and then all of a sudden it's like, I have to put that down on paper. Just wind up whipping something out, sketching it out. And unfortunately, all my best sketch work winds up on the back of paperwork from work. How many know what we're talking about? My experience. <laughs> okay, good. Now, don't be ashamed of this, but how many don't know what we're talking about? Okay, that's good. That's good, guys, and, and that you hold your hands up. But you know, hunt for that, because that's your moment you're going to grow. You're going to get bigger. Hunt for that. There's, there's inspiration that can help you, rather than thinking you're all alone. You're not on your own doing this. I mean, uh, it, it says everywhere, in all the things that I read, you know, that artwork is born out of inspiration. The real good artwork is born out of that. Otherwise, you have to be very careful, because in your head, as you've grown up, you have all the stuff that people put in your head. You've seen all the h and you've seen all the Disney, and you'll start to uh, unconsciously copy it. And it's already been done. So you have to be careful. Um, I heard Stephen Sondheim say one time that when he writes a melody, he says, I have to really watch it because suddenly I go, uh oh, that's Richard Rogers. Because it's in your head. So what you want to do is get something that's not quite in your head that comes through you. That is an original idea. The more you can be original, the better you are. Let me plug something in there too. I think that um, you need to, this is Chuck Jones basically said, you know, if you know how to draw but you don't have an education, you really don't have anything to say. So it's important that you educate yourself. Don didn't go to art school. He's got a degree in English literature, stories. What are you going to do when you're, when you, if you're in animation? trying to make an animated film, it's about the story. So educate yourself. Find out more about all the other things. Even though you love to draw, that's all you do. You need to build uh, what kind of opinion you do have and stay to what you're trying to do. And that, anything, you never know what these questions are. It could be somebody walking down the street and saying, that's an odd step. Oh, that's John Cleese. <laughs> you see something entertaining in the way somebody talks or runs or talking with another friend that will inspire you about even if you're already in animation and you're about a scene, you might just say, oh, that's, that's a great character. Let's use that. That's another form of that instant inspiration that you really need. Cool. Um, now, I'm sure you guys have plenty of your own questions. So if you would like to step up to the mic, uh, don't be afraid. That's what they're here for. 